Okay. Continuing with uh, the book God dictated to me. It's quite some time ago, actually. This is the second time I'm putting it on video. I got 50 videos, basically, or did, and uh, 50 chapters. So there's a few chapters from The Life of God's Righteous Servant. I'm blurring on my camera and I do not know why. I don't think that's you. Oh, am I too close to it? No, oh, it stopped. Well, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but anyway, this is the second time through because God had me repost, re download, re upload every one of those 50. Many, I'm not even going to tell you how many, many, many times uh, just to get out there, get enough people. They'll even watch bad videos. I mean, I've had a really bad video, but it's, if you read the details or you uh, just listen to it and try not to look at it at the same time, yeah, but it went to over 300 views. With that uh, that particular video, that particular, because every time I go to the fifty again to repost, I change the picture. Well, what do you suggest I do? It's blurring again. I'm not gonna wait long, people. I don't know. I need to go through all the camera's functions and, and see what the problem is. I made sure everything was auto focus. Okay, well, we're done. Uh, God wants me to continue. He says he's doing that to me. Is a picture <laughs> absolutely blurred to y'all? Hey, he can do that to me. Maybe that's a little lesson he wanted to throw out there. <laughs> He's going in and out. I'm going to do just a real short one. I was going to combine 15 and 16, but you can hear me. And uh, when I watch it, you know, if, you, if you could see what I was saying, you wouldn't keep going. Uh, if it's okay. Then I'll post it and do 16 and 17 possibly together. They're not very long, but this is very short. Taking, uh, this is 2 Kings, chapter 2, verse 14. Taking the mantle, which is your outer dress, your outer like robe, the mantle, which had dropped from Elijah. Elijah, having just been taken to heaven by the chariots of God, he struck the water and said, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And he too struck the water. As he struck the water, it parted to the right and to the left. And Elijah crossed over. <clears throat> Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Elijah is the only person in the Hebrew Bible to refer to God as the God of Elijah rather than the God of Israel or the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Elijah is not an Israelite. Okay? He's a Tishbite. <laughs> and there are no Tish... Uh, wait a second. He has no history. Oh, yeah. He is a Tishbite and an inhabitant of Ramoth Gilead of the Gentiles, Arabs and Assyrians. Those two were always fighting over. This is east of the Jordan. <clears throat> it's apparently very beautiful. A territory is very beautiful. Uh, it's a territory like Moab which most people are familiar with, east of the River Jordan and north of, uh, and north of Moab. He has no history 
Yeah, he just shows up and tells Cam it's not going to rain anymore and he takes off. He's gone for seven years. Uh, he has no history and there are no Tishbites in any of these ancestral trees of the Israelites that are chronicled in the Hebrew Bible. Not all tribes are, uh, in particular the smaller ones. The many references to Elijah the Tishbite and inhabitant of Ramoth Gilead. I promise you, the Israelites, the Jews, nobody went and lived in their country. You know, you wouldn't last 24 hours. The God of Elijah is the God of a single Gentile and all of the Jewish people. Though God created all humanity, the Gentile Elijah, who returns as a Gentile. Now, this is chapter 15. You've seen that covered. The righteous servant Elijah, the righteous servant prophet like Moses, the righteous servant uh, Moshe, the righteous servant described for him in 53, implicitly and explicitly, the man described in 53, which no question is me. You're not going to find anybody who fits 5310 like I do. He's just not. Why do you think Toby a singer made it his translation guilt offering? That's not what it says. That he would make, crush with disease, that he would make him. It's because he didn't have an answer for it. Offering for guilt. He doesn't know the answer to it. So his translation from Hebrew to English gets real screwy. Well, the book I used, the 1985 JPS, was begun from scratch. Okay, the Leningrad Codex, the oldest Hebrew Bible in the world. Most Bibles out there, including Shabbat, Jews for Judaism, and you can tell because they don't have the parentheses, they don't have the combination of 52, 13 through 15, and 53, 1 through 6. That's how you know, because they're there. But you know, it went into Greek and then into English, and there were people who would just make changes. You need to use, God says there's not a better translation from Hebrew to English then the JPS 1985. It's got to be 1985. But they began in 1955 with a whole team of linguistic experts. Experts who spent their whole life in translations. I told you, I'm sure it's pretty good. He, you know, he knows uh, Hebrew and everything. I mean, he tells you every other sentence. He'll say a word in English and then i got to hear it in Hebrew. Well, I don't speak Hebrew. I don't need to listen to that. But yeah, I'm proud of you. You can do that. You're, you're something else. You amaze me. Carry forth. <laughs> he does. You know he does. Um, what am I? I forgot. Sometimes he gets me off on these little rings. Again, he can talk my mind and my speech. Oh, I know where I was. Okay. The righteous servants, all four righteous servants to come. The Gentile Elijah, who returns as a Gentile in the day of the Lord, that's this day, began in 1948. God comes from Adam. It's Isaiah 63, symbolizing Adam, symbolizing Esau. All of his children were Gentiles. Never married a Jewish woman. Or an Israelite. I don't know what they were going by then. And Christianity in the town. Of, and of the Jewish people, none are with him. That's in 63. My, the peoples, they're not here. But see, he ends up trampling. So I think rabbis or people who read that think, well, they, he must mean everybody but the Jews. No, no, and you'll see why if you read the previous chapters. It's because of his last words. 
if Elijah's not successful, when I come, I'm coming with utter destruction to the land. That's what he tramples them is based on. Because he didn't do it himself. But he considers himself his creation, and it's his creation that will one day do it. Now build that temple. You get the covenant of friendship, and he says he'll place that temple among you. He knows it's not there right now. <coughs> he has to come prepare me first. Apparently, I'm a big stumbling block. <laughs> he sure is taking a long time. Um, so anyway. Other Jewish people, none are with him. God returns from Gentile lands. <laughs> with his representation, his prophet like Moses, he's got to have a man. He talks to one guy and says, go tell the Israelites this. Keith, go tell the Jewish people this. That's just how he does. That's what the Bible teaches us. That's his representation. Who is a Gentile. Why? Because he's going to come with his representation from Adam. That means we got to get from Texas to Israel. What that means. In the beginning, he has me put that, well, it, he has me convert, and I think he is. Um, that, that goes back to when you were born, as I understand it, if you convert. The Tishba. Oh. Edom no longer exists in the day of the Lord. It's not there anymore. It used to be like Jerusalem. Uh, it, it, it was like um, Basra is to Edom as Jerusalem is to Israel. You know, uh, Basra is going to. The God of Elijah is the God of a single Gentile, though God created all humanity. He, of course, is also the God of the Jewish people. One Gentile. Now, you got to imagine, there's two billion Christians out there that say he's their God. And he's saying here, let me type this. No, I'm not the God of the Gentiles. I'm the God of the Jewish people. In this day of the Lord, he is again the God of a single Gentile. It's not Elijah this time. Where is the God of Keith? You could just as well say. The Jewish people, he's their God, and one Gentile, me. His righteous servant. The God of the Jewish people and one Gentile. He does not commit or accept human sacrifice, Christians. Toby is singer, I have to add now. Literally, I have to add a Jew to who believes God's a God of human sacrifice. That's his commentary on 53, to say 53 is uh, uh, the righteous servant. Yes, he does. He changed that he would offer himself for guilt. He said, literally, this is translated guilt offering. So we go to Leviticus. None of it makes sense from that point on. And again, I just suppose, why, why would he say a, a sentence that linguistic experts had spent over 30 years on to redo that Bible? The one that has the quotations on 52, 13 through 15, and, and 53, 1 through 6. Because it makes a big difference. I'll tell you where it makes a big difference. The commentary of Jews for Judaism. Because 13 has the word exalted, and, and apparently he's, he's going to say, uh, that's world exaltation right there. I would say, no, it's not. They're exalted because they built the second temple from their own people, not the world. What does it say to the world? 
Where does it say all peoples exalt? It just says they were wealthy. But when you use the quotes, then you know it's the beginning of the description of the righteous servant. Okay, I'm going to run out again. That's it. Thank you for <laughs> listening anyway. I, I hope you were able to watch the whole thing. But to me, it kept blurring out every five or ten minutes. I'll get it fixed.